Skies are finally clearing up after a light rain fell most of the afternoon. The weather's approaching 49 degrees, so we've got a brisk West Virginia evening ahead of us. Wrap up tight and settle in, folks. This is 104.3 WBCK, the Basswood Sound. I'm your host, Carrie Hammond. Coming up after a short break, mental health expert Dr. Wick will discuss the recent opioid epidemic that's been affecting... Time to kill before the funeral. Might as well spend it here. This place was always one for decisions. Somewhere for things to fall apart. Welcome back to Basswood, Sam. I came up here every chance I could. One of the all-time great views. Really makes a small town look big. I'm not sure Nick would even want me at his funeral, given how I left things. I remember spending entire summers on the banks fishing with Nick. My hometown. It felt more imposing in my nightmares. Strange to think of Basswood without its mine. I remember spending entire summers on the banks fishing with Nick. I think the massive cliff face would be a giveaway. I get the feeling it still sees some use, given how bad the coverage is up here. These trails were great to walk if you wanted to feel truly alone.
Some of these species are endangered. She wrote an article about it. Hunting is another tradition I could never get behind. Just don't see the appeal. A lot of people were upset when it closed, but not upset enough to fix it. I left a sandwich in it for a whole week once. Dad never let me forget it. I used to love looking at basswood from up here. It helped give me perspective. Until that day. Why can't the real world be as clear and peaceful as my own mind? Even if it does mean nothing stays hidden in here. Not even me. Freak out. Would you be my little girl's godfather? I, I wouldn't trust anyone else with this. And yet I stopped taking his calls. He even called once the day before he died. I'll never know what he wanted to talk to me about. Uh, does a lot of the human interest pieces. What can I say? I'm interested in humans and their pieces. <laughs> what do you like to write? I gotta run to a review with Walt. You two feel free to chit chat. And Sam, be nice. I had never met someone so interested in others, even in me.
The story is important. You know I think that. It's just... People around here have short tempers and long memories. Be careful. Sam, are you even listening to me? I heard you, Anna. But no, I wasn't listening. Come on, Anna. Look at this. <laughs> what is it? Someone skinny dipping? Anna, you really need to see this. I can't even see. Something's blocking it. Sam, what are you doing? I'm trying to be romantic. What? Wait. Please don't tell me you're proposing. I'm down on one knee? A ring? What else would I be doing? You look like I just ran over your grandma. Okay, the silence is really starting to scare me now. Anna, please say something. Sam. Put that away. Come on. I don't want a ring. I don't need a ring. You should know that. We've discussed it before. We weren't happy. She was the one brave enough to face that. Lost in my head again. How much time did I miss? I missed the funeral. Maybe it's for the best. On the bright side, Nick's not alive for me to let him down again. There seems to be something here. Lovers scarring a tree to write down their initials. Always seemed twisted to me. Sorry, Walter, but I don't think I'll stick around. Given up already? Just a quick, depressing jaunt down memory lane and then you're gone? I know you think that the only thing waiting for you down there is hurt. Lots of hurt. And you might be right. But it's been two years. It's time to face the world. Time to adult. The good news, though, at least... You don't have to do it alone. Lost the signal. Some things never change.
Muley, you actually came. It's been a while. You'd gotten taller. Can we talk? We're talking right now. It's cold. So... You left. Joan, that's not fair. You left. It was more complicated than just me and you. It's always more important than me. Joan, listen. After Anna and I broke up, I couldn't keep living with her. I didn't have anywhere else to stay. So I moved back in with my mom, who's over in Connecticut these days. You didn't call, text, or anything. You were just gone. I don't know what to say to that. You're right. I wasn't in a state where I could reach out to anyone. I'm still not. If Nick hadn't died, I never would have come back. Thanks for being honest. <laughs> You're always at least honest. Listen, I, uh... I wanted to talk to you about what happened to Dad. It doesn't make sense. He wouldn't have just crashed. He drove like a grandma, you know that. It's... wrong. I don't buy it. I'm just in town for the funeral, Joan. I'm not a PI or a cop. You're the closest thing I can talk to. Will you just look into it, Muley? Please? She wants her father's death to mean something. But where does that lead? What if it leads to the truth? That could change everything. An hour ago, you wanted to run away. Now you want to start another investigation? A few questions won't hurt anyone. Just tonight. To reassure her. And myself. This is a wake. If you poke around, people may end up poking back. Okay, whatever you do, at least leave the kid out of it. It would be cruel to lead her on. Friends don't lie to each other. Even if it means disappointing her again? It's your call. Okay, I'll see what I can see and all that. Gumshoe it up. You will? You make some good points. It doesn't fit. I hate when things don't fit. Yeah, me too. I might just be, I don't know, crazy or something, but... You want to know for sure. I get it. Thanks, Muley. I, um... I should go in before my mom misses me. You better get in there, too. Can't hide in your car all night. Who says I'm hiding out here? I do. See you inside.
Might as well talk to Walter. I'll have to sooner or later. Whoever said you can judge someone by their car never met Tara. Yes, the cat food is under the sink. Yes, yes it is, Mother. Trust me. Oh, Samuel is here. I'll call you back. Samuel Higgs, as I live and breathe, has it really been over two years? Regardless, I'm so glad you finally made it. It's good to see you. What kept you? A trip down memory lane. I missed the funeral, but I made it to Nick's wake. You have to bring it in for a hug. It's a basswood back in town requirement. So good to see you, even if I wish the circumstances were different. In times like these, we need the comforting touch of others. At least I do. Also, have you spoken to Anna lately? No, why? Um, no reason. If you get the chance, we should catch up. We should really catch up. I'll see you inside. Ugh, I'm not ready for this. of this paper since I left. I wonder how they've been doing without me. Must have been a hard issue to write. It was something seeing my name in the basswood jungle for the first time. Mr. Samuel Higgs, Big Shot investigative reporter. Didn't think you'd ever be back in here. I'd gladly slash your tires. But that mean you couldn't leave town. And you are leaving town right after this, right? Because if you aren't, well, Nick's memory only goes so far. That's what I thought. Come on, it ain't worth it. Making friends already, I see. Declan, been a while. Hey, careful. I'd rather not be working tonight. And you always seem to angry up everyone's blood. Joel started it. I was just standing here. Well, he started it, and if you push him, he'll finish it. You watch yourself. I 
I think it's time I go put up a photo at the memorial board. That's what people do, right? That's the guy who got the mine closed. I can't believe he showed up. I didn't know you read Dickens, Ethan. Walter can be overwhelming at times, uh, but he means really. well. You just quoted him a couple of times, and I thought it sounded good. So I had to throw them all out on their ear, and only then did I realize. Ah, Samuel, my favorite ex-muckracker. Join us. Join us. How was the funeral? Wasn't there. Setting up for this. Everyone came. Most of the town, it felt like. A sea of sad, wet eyes. I gave the eulogy. It felt hollow. So hollow. He worked for me for years. For years. My best reporter. What do you even say about him? Remember that article? Something about stoplights? No one cared, but he did. Months of effort. Yield signs. He approached each story with his pen like a knight wielding a sword. It's the small things. Like he always kept his window down. Said cars made him claustrophobic. That's how he stays with us. The little details. I remember the bar bets about that safe spot in Pac-Man. He, he got me one night. Yeah, got me once, too. Can't believe it's real. Enough about Nicholas, enough. Tell me, how have you been, Sam? How have you really been? I spend all day doing nothing. I don't even count days, they just blur together. Nick's death barely hit me. I was like a pinprick compared to just everything. Time heals most wounds. Some it just makes worse. Sounds like you need something to pull you out of your rut. Well, I think I've taken enough of your gents' time. Go, mingle, circulate. But you must join us for an actual round later. You must. Oh, Walter, can I ask you something? Questions are the fountainhead of knowledge. Nick's crash. Was there anything suspicious about it? I asked myself the same thing. The very same thing. It did seem odd. Young Nicholas, a careful man in all things, including driving. I looked into it myself, you know what I found? What? A tragic accident with nothing amiss. I am both relieved and saddened to say. Ah. Life is rarely like a crime thriller, and while I don't mind you asking, some might find it a distasteful conversation at a man's memorial. Especially from you. I'll, uh... Keep that in mind. See that you do, my boy. See that you do. He's owned this bar for almost a decade and still can't afford another employee. You should have been the one giving the eulogy, Samuel. No one knew him better than you. Like Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, you two were. Sammy! Oh, it's been ages. Tara? Oh, me? I've had this stomach thing lately, always churning. Uh... And this thing with Nick? His car went up like a Sunday ham. He burned alive, you know. Have you met Hugh? He took over the old pharmacy just after you left. Um, no. The infamous Sam. I've read that article you wrote on the mine. You must have put in a lot of late work on that. Oh, uh, you read it. What do you think? Of the writing? Fine. Fine. Of the reporting? <laughs> Something that needed to be done. Many medicines are a bitter brew, but you still need to take them. That's nice of you to say. Oh, don't hesitate to drop by the pharmacy sometime. Oh, and Sam, you... But for now, I have a feeling you're not here for us. Oh. Oh, right. Don't be a stranger, Sam. So, Sam, how's life been treating you? Same way it treats everyone. 
Some days are better than others. Well, that's pretty optimistic, coming from you. I try. You staying in town long? Not really. Why? You think I'm going to disturb the peace or something? Huh. Wouldn't be your first time. Have a nice evening, Sam. You always did know how to start a ruckus. Can't say I missed that. Everyone here seemed to really like my dad. Of course they did, Bug. Everyone's nice in that creepy way. It's weird. Even Anna's weird. You seen Anna? How is she? Is she here tonight? Uh, yeah. She's getting ready. Getting ready for what? Well, I don't know. Something. I've been avoiding her. She's kind of like mothering me a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. And my own mom is already too much mom. You know? Do you ever just watch people? <laughs> it's pretty much all I do. Me too. But I don't always like what I see. Kathy, uh... Sam, you actually came. I know you two haven't been together for a long time, but I'm still sorry. We hadn't been close in years, but he was my daughter's father. I'll miss him. Joan was really hurt when you left town. Nick and I were never close after the breakup, and... Jones never had a lot of friends. Yeah. Um. Maybe don't break her heart this time when you leave town. All right? Hard to make promises. I don't do well with those in Joan. I've noticed. But I'll try. Sam, I'm gonna hold you to that. You're a lot like Pac-Man, Sam. I consume everything in my path. You find every last bite. The mine closing wasn't your fault. Your investigation just hurried things up. You probably saved some lives, you know. Hi, Dad. Hi, Muley. You piece of Language. Is that a wedding ring? I didn't know you were thinking about marriage. Oh, it's just... it feels like the right thing to do. Dad, what's the point of getting married? Well, it's just one of those things people do, Bug. Here, you can play. Someone has to show you, grown-ups. Video games are the realm of the young. Have you talked to Anna about this? That's kind of the point. I'll talk to her about it when I show her the ring. If you say so, hey, just remember I'm here, right? If you need anything, Anything but my arcade secrets. Those I'll take to the grave. Sorry we lost touch. Sorry I lost touch. 
Rust up, big guy. This photo always looked weird. Nick could never keep a straight face. Happier times. We drove straight to the sea after work on a Friday. Hell of a weekend. Bug was so small back then. Those two were a great team. He was more her best friend than a dad. I wonder who took that picture. Bug was so small back then. Samuel, guess I lost the bet. Bet? Yeah, that bet you'd never come back to Basswood. Not after you went careening out of town like a bat out of hell the instant that article broke bad. Well, Dennis, I won the bet I had with myself that you'd be an asshole right off the bat. That was a safe bet. What are you even doing here, Dennis? You and Nick become friends or something? Nope. He thought I was a drunk, which I am. And I thought he was a hack, which he was. This coming from the IT guy. Didn't know resetting passwords could give you a journalism degree. It can. But it does give me less patience for people who sling mud my way. Relax. I'm just playing. <laughs> At least tell me how you've been. If you must know, I still haven't bounced back from when Anna and I broke up. I think you meant since she broke up with you. Yeah, but I hear you. Yeah, that's how I ended up in this shit town. Chasing a woman. Yeah, then she left and I got stuck here with two kids. Anyway, cheers to Nick. A man that, unlike us, people actually liked. Speaking of which... more than 3,000 milligrams. I thought it was 4,000. That's where Nick and I sat every time he dragged me out for drinks after work. But 
that amount is damaging in the long term. Old timers in general already don't like me, and the article just made it worse. Hey Sam, why don't you drink to Nick on the other side of the bar? so tragic what happened to Nick. The details are horrible. They think he didn't die on impact. Instead, he roasted, roasted to death. Not enough to damage the bones, but you know, not a pretty sight. Unless you're into that kind of thing, of course. I didn't mean to be rude, Sam. It's all right, Tara. I don't like the sight of dead, burned people. Oh, thank God. I wouldn't want to be rude on a day like this. Poor, poor Sam. Now that Nick is gone, everyone in town hates you. I mean, I don't. Why would I? It's not my job you destroyed. You're not the cause of all my problems. I mean, that's what you did for pretty much all of Basswood, but not to me. So, I don't hate you. Thanks for the confidence booster, Tara. I'll see you around. Bess always had a soft spot for Nick. I think she liked his work ethic. <laughs> Can't believe this whole thing's still working. Nick and I spent so much money on this machine. Anna? Sam! I've missed you. Why'd it take so long for you to darken my doorstep? Well, I'm here now. I'll have to try and come by more often. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? Even if not everyone around here would like it. People around here have short tempers. <laughs> and long memories. But most of them mean well. Sam, the mine was going to close anyways. Maybe in a year or two, five, if the Lord has a sense of humor. It was going to run dry or have an even bigger disaster. It wasn't your fault. I 
wish everyone else understood that. People are scared. Mad. You were easy to blame. When my father lost his legs, nobody knew the mine wasn't following regulations. You were the only one who started asking questions. Whenever people talk about you, he always says, you did the right thing. Yeah, well, your dad's Joe. He's an oak, unmoving and annoyingly supportive. <laughs> it wasn't just him. Nick thought your piece was great. He was actually jealous. He always wanted to write something that shook the pillars of heaven, as he used to put it. You know, Nick and I had moved in together, started to get serious. But I think it's only now I realize how much I cared for him. You and Nick started going out? When did this happen? A few months ago. He... He never told you? He asked me to let him be the one to say something. You two had been so close. He probably tried. I hadn't been answering his calls. Ah. <laughs> That's the worst part, right? Anything broken just stays broken now. But this... This was all nice. The funeral, the wake. Walter did a good job. But it all just makes me feel heavy. It makes my heart hurt. Like Nick's memory has been laid on top of me and I'm still carrying him. Nick's death. Do you know if he had any enemies? Working on anything dangerous? Whew. Now this is a real can of worms. This is a wake. I know that. Do you? This isn't the time to be digging and pushing. You always do this. You always... I, I get it. I just... You... You're still you, huh? You'll always still be you, Sam. I hope you never change, but I can't handle this right now. I'm gonna go home. I hate that his stuff is all over my house. Then drink and cry all night. You do what you need to do. See you around. Samuel, come, have a round with me. I need a drink or two, or three, and then I'll go. He's owned this bar for almost a decade and still can't afford another employee. He's owned this bar for almost a decade and still can't afford another employee. Walter can be overwhelming at times. But he means well. Nick was the good sort. Sometimes the good sort die like the bad sort. It's not fair. Some people can play this game drunk. Anna was best at three beers.
It's supposedly the spirit of coal. Doesn't really belong here anymore. So, Nick wasn't drunk, and me? I was drunk as a skunk. Ah, Samuel, 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 join us. We were just sharing stories about dear Nicholas. And let me get your next round. Maybe Ethan has a suggestion for a worthy spirit? Well, oh, spirits? Oh, no, no. Friends drink beer. Yes, I suppose that's fitting. To dear Nicholas. Yeah, he'd been coming in a lot lately. Sat right there. With a bad dad joke or two. <laughs> with friends, I guess? Maybe Anna. No, oh, by himself with his laptop as his date. He never drank alone. You two were close though, right? Tell me about the man outside the bar. He had a terrible memory. Couldn't remember names, dates, passwords. Kept his notes squirreled around him like a hoard. child doing drinking. You have no control over her? Ethan can lose I his wasn't license. doing anything. Don't touch me. Joan. Leave me alone. Ugh. You guys are all so, so stupid. You do not talk to people that way. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. She's just so, so... That was quite heavy-handed. I hope the little one doesn't take it to heart. Declan sure came at her with both barrels. Joan's tough, though. She'll be okay. I'd say that went well. Ish. You got to chat with everyone you've been avoiding. Even if Joan got inside your head with her whole dad mystery death thing. Just shut up. Coming back to Basswood was your idea. You're the one in the driver's seat, Sam. I can't make you do anything. Deep down, you've been looking for a reason to come back. <sighs> It's gonna be one of those long nights inside your head, huh? Hey, I didn't... I didn't ask for you to be here. To come back. I couldn't let you miss this. You just showed up. You can't see it now, but the guilt would have eaten you alive. You're back out in the world. Feeling emotions, fitting in, that's progress. Fuck the world. Pointless talking, and more talking, and no one says what they mean. Go away. Let me enjoy being miserable. Just try and make sure you don't do anything stupid. No promises. 